Well, what happens on the field is not anything that we can control in Cooperstown. Our, our job is to document the game's history and present it and let people um, have their own value judgments about how they feel. You know, our rules for election are pretty simple. They, they ask our uh, voters, who are the baseball writers, uh, to look at a player's character, integrity, sportsmanship, in addition to the contributions that they make for their teams. And to what extent uh, voters weigh those is up to them individually. Um, you know, we're in such a different era now than in eras past that uh, guys are going to probably weigh the character clause a lot more so than they did years ago. But I think it'll sort itself out. Um, it, it, it's sad to think that potentially the all-time hits leader, the all-time home runs leader, uh, the active, well, until Greg Maddox, you know, pass Clemens, the active winning as pitcher, you know, might not end up in Cooperstown. Time will tell what happens. Uh, the players that deserve to be there will get there. I don't think the writers have ever elected anybody that's not deserving, and we don't think that that's, we think that they'll continue that pattern in the future. I am a strong believer in, in kids playing multiple sports. I think it helps develop them in a lot of different ways, as long as one of those sports is baseball. <laughs> um, but absolutely, that's the way it's going. I mean, heck, I see it with my own kids. I mean, my oldest daughter is a, uh, is a, a, a pretty good basketball player, and she also loves to play softball. And the basketball coaches just, they pressure her so much to play year-round and in that case, it's really not healthy because when you play one sport, especially like that, you're constantly making the same movements over and over again. It's more stress on the body. And I think, you know, the baseball season is a, is a great break for her and it helps her develop uh, other, in other ways and other muscles. And she comes out of the basketball season in great shape and she thinks she's in great shape. She goes to one softball practice, she comes home sore. I said, well, you're sore because you're using completely different muscles and movements, that's why. Um, so I, I'm, I agree, and I, I don't know how, uh, how to get past that, uh, the, the, the single sport, but, uh, but I agree. I think they should play as many sports as you can when you're young until you get to a, a level where you're gonna try to make a commitment to go to college and then maybe choose one. Baseball used to be such a huge part of the country. I mean, everybody played it. Urban settings, rural, suburban, everybody played baseball on their own, independently, all the time. And that's where you got good. You would go to your club team once a week and play, and, you know, to supplement what you were doing, but that's not really where you got good at the game. You got good by playing every single day. Um, and what has changed is now the independent play is gone. You can you can drive around on a perfect spring day, perfect summer day, you won't find kids playing baseball anywhere. And what's really interesting is, uh, you know, like Steve said, the kids here in, in the United States, they don't play pickup games anymore the way we once did. And things are structured. So the, the kids here, they're very good at, at hitting and at pitching because those are the things that you work on a lot in the batting cage and in the pitching tunnels. But the other little fine parts of the game, the, the fielding and the throwing, not quite as strong as they once were. And you still see that in, in the major leagues. Parents don't prepare their kids for failure. In baseball, as we know, it's a game of failure. And I mean, I see it in my own kids where they'll try something that they fail, they want to move on to something else. And I mean, if we don't install that, instill that in them that, you know, you've got to succeed, you've got to overcome failure. I think part of it is that too, societal. There are basically two trains of thought now when you're evaluating players. You have teams that, uh, that scout kind of the old fashioned way, and we like athletes and we like tools. Right. And just like you said, I mean, you use a stopwatch, you use a radar gun, you have your, your different uh, tools that you'll grade out, but ultimately it comes down to the scout's opinion on what they think the player is. And that's the way we do it. There are many other teams now that, that use statistics as That's one of the main ways that they evaluate. We don't believe in that. I mean, we believe that you put your eyes on the player and you, you project them uh, from what you see on the field. So I even think some of those clubs that have used a lot of statistical data are, are even kind of coming back, coming back this way. But, you know, hey, we're all competitors, you know, the, the 30 teams, and everyone's looking for a different way to do something to get an advantage. So I think some clubs have, have kind of gone a di different direction away from, you know, old-fashioned scouting. But uh, at least you'll be happy to know that the Phillies, we, uh, we do it the old-fashioned way. That way really works best for us.
find something you love to do and figure out a way to make money doing it and make a living doing it. Get a career, not a job. I made the mistake of getting a job out of college. And, you know, it was a mistake. But find something, stick with what you love to do. And like Rob said, there, there's a lot of careers in baseball, even if you're not going to make it as a player. There's a lot of other ways to make a living in the game and, and stay with the game, too. That's my piece.